by now. Everyone at home has to stay muted until you're asked to speak. Please, thank you. Okay, let's try again. Take two. <laughs> Take two? From the, no. no yeah. Yeah. <laughs> um, right, so, so, um, we spoke with the, the state police, police, state police, police the, yeah. the day of, thank you. They, uh, they interviewed my daughter that evening, um, and that was that. The next day, the 16th, I left a message for our town constable um, using the phone number that I got from the town website. And to this day, not received any sort of callback. Um, and so my concern is, okay, so I get technology, maybe, maybe he didn't get the message, but still, my concern is, Who's our go-to in the case of a public safety issue? All the information that we ended up getting ultimately came from various community members who were able to identify this, we think, to the best of our understanding, we think we identified the individual. Um, but all that came from community. None of that came from any official source. Um, and so, you know, state police called, but, you know, who, who, who are we supposed to call if there's an issue? And if our town constable doesn't, isn't sort of the, the person who sort of sorts through the importance and the, the dangerousness, who is? I would like to just say, in the end, it doesn't seem like this person was at all a risk, mm -hmm. and that's what we gleaned from community members, and it was it was reassuring to hear that. But um, so I just wanted to point that out, like that 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 sure. incident seems yeah. to have been resolved favorably. But I just wanted, no, yeah. I, I I hear the angst, and I hear uh, that's a good ending. But you did not did not know that. Um, Say that again. It turns out that there may be a good ending, but you did not know the ending on day two of it. Um, we are we contract with the Vermont State Police. Uh, uh, 911 and going to the, having a state state police become involved uh, was the right thing to do. Uh, um, I, I'm sorry to hear that our constable didn't follow up. I think a courtesy call would have been, at the very least, uh, it's, it was needed. And uh, Martin and I can kind of follow up on that. Yeah, but this, the state police is your first phone call. That's the first phone call, because the constable is part-time. Um, he now does have a full-time job. So he's not as accessible as he was, but he should have called back. We will follow up on that, but the first, First line of defense is the state police. Call the state police immediately. And uh, let me just add, um, as you may know, we're in a transition phase. Uh, as a state police, are not able to meet the contract contracted hours that we have with them. Um, we have signed a contract with them so that we're covered as of July 1st for the new year. Um, we are, um, we will be forming a committee within town to, to help uh, with the question of what does safety mean to our community. Um, and use that committee to lead into a town-wide meeting to have that same discussion. Um, and then create a needs list of this is what Hartland would like as a, for safety slash policing. I'm using the word safety because uh, policing is one aspect yeah, of course. what we're talking about. Um, we may have more requirements than we can afford, but at least we have to flesh out what those requirements are. Um, some of this work was done years ago, um, um, not too far ago. Um, when a decision between the Winslow Police and the State Police came up. Um, so that's, we hear the issue. Um, we're, we're very aware of the issue. Um, uh, I don't think any of us sitting here have a solution um, at this point. Um, and and uh, 
Yeah, no, and we weren't looking for a solution necessarily just to bring it to your attention. And again, we're not out to, to crucify anybody. We're just, you know, it, there's a hole someplace. And we appreciate all the various community members who, uh, who participated in identifying the individual and you know, whatever. So, okay. thank you. Thank you. Dave Singer. Okay. Um, Dave Singer. Dave. 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 I made it pre enlightenment. Wednesday, hosted in our office, is a meeting of the regional police chiefs, the chiefs of police, aware of the situation of not just this town, but other towns, uh, to help garner some interest. There's a barbecue for them. I'm not putting on the barbecue, but uh, not for me. Uh, what they'll come up with, I don't know. But again, this is not a situation that's solely a part of this problem. And uh, frankly, a lot of people are tired of having a camp on the road. There's got to be something done. That is what could happen the next day or next week. Or maybe nothing major for another year. Something has got to happen. And I credit the chiefs of police because they're taking it upon themselves to come up with something, a plan, which they will bring forward with the balance and see what do you think, what do you want. Again, you folks know that I'm concerned there's a shooting on my street. I'm concerned because a policeman our next door was broken into. And I'm bored. That's the only thing I have to say. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. So, in this situation, you know how Holmes Vermont State Police. But do the state police ever connect with our town constable to give them an update, to give them this is what happened, we're not responding? In I, I is don't there know. Any communication because we just spent fourteen thousand dollars. Sadly, I don't believe so. On on a tool for our yeah. constable to have that communication with the right. state police. So well, that would be one. So that, that radio is for if you pull somebody over and has and they have an outstanding one, they got to get arrested. That's what that that tool is for. That tool is for is to do the job when he's when he's working for the town. All right. So who does supervise the town constable? He's he supervises himself. He's an elected official and he's only answerable to the public. That's what I thought. But look, but he doesn't have in a law enforcement tier, there's no one supervising him. No. Hmm. No, I, you know, the more we understand this complex of what's going on between our local municipalities, the state police, the sheriff, um, the constables, um, the more loose it feels like there's really not a lot of connections. So um, um, we have some work to do ahead as, as a I community. Think so. I think so. I think so, yeah. Okay. We all do. We have a community. We need to really participate in this journey. And I would like to use. Okay. The law enforcement community, community itself is trying to work with you folks. And again, I don't mean just this town, but other towns. Again, I'll repeat there is a meeting at our office. I didn't sponsor it, the sheriff's department did. But it's a meeting of local police chiefs. Yeah, and the New York Times today had an article about within the urban area of the boroughs of New York how they were trying to address some of the same issues we are with communication and um, safety, the building of safety. So uh, as David is alluding, this is a, it's a bigger problem in Harvard, but we have, to, we have to solve it ourselves. Okay, my other comments were, um, were a little more light in nature. Do we have anybody online that has their hand up? There's no hand up. No. Hands up. Uh, no. Uh, on May the 20th, the uh, Portland Garden Club um, had a plan sale out here in front of Damon Hall. Um, and I just wanted to take a moment to thank those, the members of that club and, and friends of that club um, for the plantings that they do both here at Damon Hall as well as the library. Um, and, you know, the second is on Sunday the 21st, uh, the Portland Historical Society at their annual meeting and a presentation of old photographs of Portland. Um, it's held here in Hall. 
Uh, I thought it was very well attended, and I certainly learned some more history about my town. Okay. Um, any other public comments? Well, just to add to that, Bill, um, just to throw out a thank you to the volunteers that put flags on the Veterans and Employees Memorial Day. Thank you. Um, yeah, it's, it's, um, it's good to see that, and it's good to know that the cemeteries were, were covered as well. Okay, this evening uh, we are having um, uh, an information session um, with uh, to enable questions as well as any concerns um, about the intersection project, which is about to launch. We have created a team that will help the project with the fundamentals of the, of the scope, what is going to be done, how it is done, it's really at this point. The duration, uh, the time aspect, when it's going to start, hopefully when we'll get it finished, and, and the cost, um, keeping, keeping track of it. Um, in addition, this team will provide um, an even more important piece to the community, the communication about the project and how it's unfolding. Um, uh, Martin, our acting town manager, will be the prime first uh, point of contact for questions. Um, uh, and I hope this evening we'll be able to establish uh, where those questions can be asked and how they can be answered. Um, with us this evening, we have Rita Cito. Um, I had the pleasure of working, as others um, here, working with Rita, who is a member of the Two Rivers Adequichi Planning Commission. Uh, she's the Transportation Planning Program and has been doing, has been with this intersection project for some time, um, and, and we are pleased to have her on board. Sitting with Rita is Everett Hammond who works for uh, GPI. Uh, GPI is the firm that will be doing um, construction inspection and testing. They are basically the engineering firm that will be uh, implementing the project and overseeing the project. Um, I hope I have that correct. Yes, right. Yeah. Okay. So I'm going to turn the meeting over to Martin, to Rita, and to Everett, uh, and um, look to learn things myself. Mm -hmm. All right. Right ahead. All right. All right. Thank you. Thank you. Well, welcome. Um, and uh, thank you for having us here. Um, I think it's a momentous day that we are about to embark on the start of the construction of the intersection project. Um, many of you, we brought um, some handouts up yep. behind. There's some there if you need some reference. Um, and for folks that are online, um, I direct you to the town website. Uh, we will try uh, as best as we can to kind of um, funnel uh, information to the website for folks that can kind of pull that and kind of review at their leisure. Um, so there's quite uh, a lot of things to, that we can kind of talk about. But um, I guess before we kind of talk about the actual project that is about to embark, um, with my time at the Regional Planning Commission, uh, there's definitely been um, some history with this intersection project, and um, I did kind of create like a bit of a nice timeline uh, for folks um, to kind of, you know, for folks that may not have been around or, um, you know, just kind of talk about like, how this project kind of came to be. Um, and so I won't go into super detail, but just kind of like a really quick overview of, you know, where this project kind of initiated from. Obviously, the timeline from 2013 is when the town initially secured a planning grant to kind of uh, initially look at the pedestrian safety of the intersection. Um, I believe even prior to this effort, um, you know, Bruno Associates, with John Bruno, their firm had probably done some initial, um, you know, engineering or scoping of the area as well. So um, it's been talked about for quite some time, but the, the scoping grant 
which kind of looked at the intersection and how pedestrian safety was going to be, um, you know, impacted uh, with the current configuration uh, was going to, you know, be uh, looked at. So at the end of the scoping study, there were actually four uh, alternative configurations, um, and you know, a roundabout was one of them. Um, kind of an interesting like T intersection with a slip lane, uh, but ultimately, uh, for the folks that came to the preferred alternatives meeting, uh, folks did feel like a four-way stop was probably the most simplest and easiest to kind of uh, reconfigure. And so with that, um, the town decided to move forward with um, designing the intersection with the four-way stop. Uh, the town did use town funds to kind of uh, spearhead that effort. They hired uh, BHB, uh, the design firm that we have now, to kind of really flush it out uh, so that it can um, you know, make its way into like a construction set of plans. So back in you know, 2018, the construction of the intersection the configuration was estimated to be around you know, half a million dollars. Um, so in addition to that, um, obviously with the intersection of the two state highways, there's also a PG road that kind of comes down into the intersection. So the town also secured a, uh, a, dist a B Trans district paving grant that would cover the resurfacing of the local road portion. Um, and then I believe that is when uh, Dave Ormiston, a uh, previous town manager, came in, kind of looking at the, uh, you know, the project scope. Um, there was obviously a sidewalk component, a small sidewalk component, um, and there was a question of, you know, why, why has the town not uh, applied for a sidewalk grant to the Agency of Transportation to at least cover some of the costs? And I said, I don't know. But, um, you know, with, with his um, authorization, we applied for a sidewalk grant uh, through the Agency of Transportation that would cover the construction part of the sidewalk, um, which was pretty successful. And then uh, in 2020, we, you know, once COVID hit, <laughs> that was an interesting time. Uh, but as the engineering firm kind of finalized the costs, um, and we also saw the potential COVID impacts in terms of supply and demand and things like that. Um, we saw there was also, um, you know, a, a large gap in terms of the construction, at least for the sidewalk portion. Um, and I believe the town was fortunate enough uh, to be able to apply for a grant enhancement towards the sidewalk construction portion. So. Um, we're like, okay, let's, you know, we're, we're, we're pretty much ready to go. Um, but then also, back in 2020, um, I believe there was an initiative uh, through the town to, you know, recommend burying the utilities as well. So before that, the design was just reconfiguring the intersection and, and not touching the utilities. Um, but, as you all know, um, back in August 2020, the town voted by a two-thirds majority to bury the utilities and secure a bond to um, assist with covering the cost of that. So 2021, we spent the year kind of uh, coordinating with the five different utilities, uh, which is quite a feat <laughs> in itself. Um, but, and then we finally, um, you know, as, as you were aware, last year we tried to uh, go up to bid to construction um, back in March. Uh, it was a very uh, tumultuous time, I guess you could say, in the construction world to go up to bid. Um, and, and so that bid uh, was not successful. And so we decided to uh, re-advertise this year, which we're all familiar with. And we were very successful to secure a contractor bid for um, pretty close to the cost estimate of the engineering firm. So, so here we are. We're pretty much on board. Um, 
And uh, we have the contractor on board, we have our construction inspection team on board, um, and we are pretty much ready to go. Um, so as we kind of focus on the details of the construction project, oh, yes? Uh, sorry, uh, just a quick question on the 2020 sidewalk plan. Yep. Uh, see, you, know, you said it's 125000 When I went back and looked at the VHP cost estimate from December, they had it listed at 100000 Right, so the 100000 and then plus the match. So that the, yeah, so the 80% is the, we were awarded 100000 and then the 20%, which is 25%. So it's the town match. Correct. Okay. Yep. Thank you. So um, we have the variable message boards already placed on um, all three legs of the state highway, kind of um, informing folks that uh, you know work is to begin on Monday. Um, we're just finalizing right now. Um, Everett is just reviewing the final submittals of the contractor, just making sure everything will be approved. Um, and uh, we'll probably issue a notice to proceed later this week. Um, so the contractor will be kind of ready to go. Um, so I want to take a few minutes, or you know, a pause if you have any questions right now before I kind of go into the details of the project. I think the last time you came and spoke to us, you were waiting for the traffic control plan. Yes. That's all. That's, that's that. Yep. They submitted a traffic control plan. It was reviewed and uh, commented by VTrans. Um, and so Everett, um, you know, when when they start construction, we will make sure all those uh, recommended comments and changes will be implemented. Thank you. Yeah. So, all right. So I have. Uh, Copy of the plan, a very abbreviated, and I would like to talk about page two. Right here. You can see. Yes, yeah, the second, second page. Yep. Yeah. I think that'll be the best page to kind of focus on. <clears throat> so you can kind of see in the you can kind of see in the dark lines um, you know, what the new configuration will be. Um, and very slightly, the dog lines, if you can kind of see through them, is the existing configuration of the uh, intersection. Um, so actually, let's kind of start, um, start at the southern end. So I believe the contractor will start at the southern end near uh, Mike's store. Um, the first item will be actually trenching the ground so they can start burying the utilities. Um, but they will, for the entire intersection, um, intersection on all legs, they will have um, flaggers and uh, one lane traffic, alternating traffic, just so that everybody is, is clear. Um, so that's kind of the first leg, or the first phase. Um, the second phase is actually going to be the northeast quadrant. Um, uh, the Dunn's property, or uh, my, uh, sorry, Mr. Dunn's property, and um, and uh, Mr. Tom White's property, uh, and then the third quadrant is actually going to be the Damon Hall quadrant, uh, the northwest. The fourth quadrant will actually be um, by the BGS market and the bank. And then the final quadrant that they will work on and kind of close up will be uh, the new green. So they're going to keep the green or the slip lane open for pretty much the entire intersection until they can kind of, um, you know, finalize the different quadrant, the new curbing, and, and use the slip lane to help with, um, you know, traffic control and alternating traffic. So that'll be the last piece to kind of close up so that the new intersection will be um, completed and then they can work internally on like landscaping and uh, the new sidewalk pieces. So that's kind of in general um, what the proposed phasing of the project will be. So, excuse me, we did, uh, yep. 
So what's the extent of the bearing of the power line and so on for people? Sure. Because so generally it, speaking, if we can just use landmark. Oh, sure. <clears throat> so, um, that's awesome. okay. here. so they will be removing um, the pool in front of the bank and the one pool that's like on the, on the uh, no, intersection no. in the middle of the road. Um, so basically they will be trenching from the bank to the green um, and that will be underground. And so you'll see a lot of, um, you know, a lot of Green Mountain Power um, trucks in the last couple of weeks. Um, I believe they're just making sure that their current poles are, um, will be adequate for when they have to move the lines to the new ones and making sure, um, as well as the, as the telecom communication lines uh, will be able to be moved as well. So it was on the listserv, I think, a week and a half. It was a new pole that was put in that was very tall. There's been a lot of speculation about why that's there. Can you tell us why that new pole is in place? The one by the post office. By the post office. So I believe they are, um, and actually, if you... I, I can answer that. Oh, go ahead. Dan, Dan emailed me on that because I asked that question. Perfect, thank you. So BG's is not going to have their wires on the ground. So that new pole, so the wires are going to be buried in the green space, going to go under the road, come up the pole, and go to the mall. So that's why that pole has been put in there. And the new pole in front of Damon Hall, I believe is just upgrading the pole, and all that's hanging on it is a light, the, the street light. <coughs> And I believe also, um, as we kind of switch to utilities, um, I believe there have also been questions about uh, the tree species. Yes. Yep. So back on that second page there, um, in the top left corner, you can kind of see um, the list of deciduous trees. Um, so these species, um, we have Sienna Glen Maple, Spring Snow Crab Apple, and a Green Spire Little Leaf Linden. Um, and so we also have some quantities as well uh, that will be throughout the project for each type. So these species um, have been identified and selected by the HB's landscape architect, and they've also been reviewed and approved by the B-Trans landscape architect. Um, just so you know, because uh, most of this project is in the state right of way, the Agency of Transportation has a street tree policy and they have guidance on the types of species of plants that are going to be in the state right of way for um, you know, site distance and maintenance purposes. So, um, so that had been you know, approved through the Agency of Transportation. In the uh, new green space there on the southeast corner, yep. uh, uh, two is two AF. Is that the pedestal that's, that's going to be? Uh, no. So two AF. Um, I think it looks like the, it says there will be two. Uh, Sienna Glen Maples. Okay. Then is there just one pedestal for you? So service? at the moment, um, and, and you were present at the utility coordination yeah. meeting, um, after much uh, coordination with the utility, um, specifically with the telecom utilities, VTEL, Comcast, and First Light, um, they feel like with the pedestal, um, they're not all going to fit in that. So they have asked for vaults instead. So it will be underground mm -hmm. um, in the green space. And actually, we feel like uh, the vaults will be on the, on the left side of that sidewalk path in the green. Okay. To make, um, because each, each telecom needs to have their own vaults. That's going to be three feet by three feet by three feet. Um, because all the wires are going to be trenched in the green, they need that um, 
the vault space in order to fit each set in the breed so that they can then pull out and then service the surrounding uh, properties. The vault with patches for? Yes, they'll have like a manhole cover to access it from the top, but it won't, it won't, uh, what's nice is like it won't um, impact like the green space, right. like, a, like a pedestal, which is like above ground. Right. So. But, it, but they'll be patches there. Correct. Okay. And so with, with that, our current designer is, um, you know, is, is going to be reconfiguring the landscape plan, you know, now that you know, they're going to move the trees around just to make sure it'll still, you know, fit okay. So yeah, you can kind of see, um, you know, the new curbing that will uh, be in place as well as the crosswalks. Um, it should make for a much uh, safer crossing environment for the village. Um, and a brand new green space for the community to kind of enjoy, um, as well as, um, you know, a four-way stop, so you're not going to have to look at the seven, seven different stop signs and which, depending on which leg that you're coming in, and, um, you know, be a really beautiful gateway into the community, so. The other commonly asked question is, where is the uh, soldier going? The soldier is going. Um, so right now, yep. Yeah. <clears throat> so back on that same page, you can kind of see in the quadrant, there's like a square with the dark dot. That's what I figured it was. I just want to make sure. Yeah. Uh, I believe, and I don't know the history of um, the discussion of how of that final location. I was not involved in the discussion uh, beforehand. I think that might have been uh, during Bob Stacy's tenure. Uh, of where when they were kind of Closer. discussing where the monument should be relocated, but again, that location has also been approved by the Trans uh, Historic Preservation. So that day when they actually moved the monument, the contractor will have a train. Um, all the V Trans folks will be coming down. Will probably come down as well, just to kind of witness uh, the relocation of the monument. So. Dumb question. Um, and there will be insurance in case of yep. an accident. Yeah, the contractor has their insurance requirements. So. And the historian from the state will be here that day also. Correct. Yeah, there, um, yeah, they will be required to take photos beforehand to document the existing conditions, and then uh, once they relocate it, they'll take photos uh, afterwards uh, to just kind of compare and see if hopefully there are any damages and stuff. So we hope it'll be a very smooth move. Will you be talking about traffic flow and into the market in that area? Sure. So, in terms of the um, the construction operations, uh, Monday to Friday, seven to five, um, and at the end of the day, all the cones and things like that will be kind of cleared, um, and we'll you know resume the two-way traffic until the following morning, when the contractor will set up their traffic control plan, depending on you know, what phase they're at, um, so. And obviously when they switch quadrants or phases, um, we will make sure to kind of announce that and make sure, you know, new traffic pattern, or, you know, depending on what that might be. Would be a question there. You know, I'm not understanding this section here. You've got a green space. Is there, so is Route 5 going to move a little bit towards the triangle to get reasons by the, by so the right. building? And so you look like parking spaces. So where's the building? So the building is right here. I'm oh, sorry. The building is where? Back here. It's right here. Back here? The building is uh, right here. Right here? Right here? Yeah. Yeah. Sure. And these are parking spaces? They will be parking spaces. So we're basically, we're basically building up the pavement to come in. 
you know, it's coming into where the current shrine is. Right? Yeah. This is the shrine. No, the, the, the monuments. Oh, yeah, that is the monuments. This is the old monuments. Right. So, I mean, so the monuments are here. Yeah. And then what used to be a sort of travel way as you're going north on each road, that. It's curved. Yeah. It's really narrow. Yeah, we're not moving the building. I was going to say, I don't see a building. I think ensuring that they're compliant with what's in the plans. Um, and then uh, he's also reached out to the immediately impacted abutters in the area. Um, he's, uh, Martin has uh, given us phone numbers and he's called them and left messages. Well, some, I've left well, some. <laughs> some ring, 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 and no answer, but uh, I will be catching up to him. So I, I won't be here really until Wednesday, I'm meeting with the contractor, kind of get a better sense. He's going to have more time put into the thought process, exactly what's going to happen. He definitely gets that started by Mike. The first thing that's going to happen is two catch basins that go toward this two by library at the entrance, because they're the deepest. They're going to put those in first, then the electrical conduits and the other conduits are going to head up toward the green area. Can you speak uh, up a little bit? Excuse Can me. you speak up? The, yep. the acoustics are terrible. Oh, okay. He'll head up, you know, so we start down to where Mike's heading up through. Uh, they're going to keep that slip leg open to the north of Route 5 as long as possible. It won't be to probably to the very end. Uh, but that's what I'm going to find out on Wednesday. And I'll let you know. I think it's going to be at 9 o'clock. You're just going to test okay. confirmation. Okay. Make it. Okay. Um, so, with that, you know, there's a lot of stuff that's going to happen, but they want to be efficient. And a lot of that's like, it would be some subcontract work. It could be, you know, I don't know if you remember a year, it was two years ago now when Hartford did the, the roundabout. That got delayed because of co granite contractors and I think sidewalk contractors. Those basically are the same people they're using. So hopefully, they're great contractors or subcontractors and, and uh, hopefully that's not going to be the problem. But he's got to keep things moving to make sure everything goes, goes as good as possible. They're all going to work at the intersection simultaneously so that now yeah. we can move forward. Well, we'll see how, you know, they're, they're going to put together a plan on that. So it may not be exactly all the quarters, one, two, three, and four, and then close it up. But the leg will be open for probably four or five weeks anyway, that slip leg. And then uh, yeah. they'll move forward from there. And we, we will be doing uh, to, to, to Martin weekly. So basically, I'll have probably a Thursday project meeting. And then from Thursday, we'll put together a sense of what's going to happen a week after that, will go out on a Friday. Yeah. Sometime. So I'll be sending out the weekly reports to Martin to post on the website. <coughs> and also, if there is interest, um, if if there are interest for you to um, be on a direct email from my distribution, I've kind of generated a list of the of that. Like so, for you know, agency of transportation, the project team, um, immediate abutters. But if you are interested in getting a direct weekly email. Um, please let Martin know, and then he can forward that contact to me. Thank you. 
Ever, you just raised a yellow flag for me. Um, I, I feel this summer that the quality of the flaggers that are looking around the Upper Valley are, has, has well, they would be great, but um, I, I was driving up Route 4 and, you know, there's construction vehicles and there's just no flagger there, you know, and I'm like poking around saying, okay, we'll go. And, um, mm. The yellow flag you raised is when you said there would be multiple subcontractors and you hinted that they always don't work well together or aren't available or something. But who's in charge of the subcontractors if we only have one flagging team? You know, are they going to be in sync so that it, okay. the community is safe? It's all Knox construction. So we have a contract with Knox construction. Sure, I understand that. And they are yeah. in charge of all that. All right. And Knox will be in charge of the flagging. And they've also ensured they will have flaggers for to cover all of the intersections as okay. per the traffic control plan. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So Okay. Yeah, there won't be unattended legs of, of traffic. So, okay. yeah. Great. Mm -hmm. Dave? Without wanting to be too vociferous about it, how do you go there if you go? I came down the other day, there's a flag at the bottom of my street. She didn't look in my direction. I think there's a few of guys going here. It's hard to tell me. So. Uh, nonetheless, story of the city, right? That's cool. You know, we used to certify, yeah, I was with the sheriff's department, we used to certify them in order to be a yeah, flag. Yeah, that we felt we were going to be a flag. You can't have flaggers, and that's the information. That's my only access. I, I, I can confine myself to a yurt on my property, but I can't do it. You said you have some idea to try to do it. If one of you can speak to them and say, you know, there are some rules in the world that you guys are here for your safety. And it's yeah. Definitely. The traffic flagging certifications, there are, you know, basic rules of, you know, you always need to be aware of your surroundings. Um, you can't smoke, even if I'm afraid you can. Right. And that that will be the contractor to uh, open Thank you your doors. Thank you. Yeah. Jim? Uh, hopefully, an easy question. The catch basins, yep. where do they drain to? Um, let's see. So I believe, um, I think on page four, can I see the utility work? I'm not sure where the rest of it goes, but it would be in the state. That goes down to the parking lot. Oh. Exactly where it outlets. Like this. Right. You look at this one here. Which parking lot? To the, uh, oh, by the way. Yeah, so right through here. Here's the green area. The new green and the section heading down through here. He's not an existing. Existing. Right. So this is all existing. Yeah. There is some new drain to it going on. That's the solid one. So I'm just kind of curious as to what the destination is. Yeah. Right. No change in the destination. Yeah. So I think that's all that I've written that I have at this point. Um, I, I have reached out to the state police for um, support on Martinsville Road as the project starts next week. And they are going to try and have an officer there to, because of the school going on to make sure people stay going slow. Um, Bill and I have reached out, uh, ordered signs, no through traffic on Martinsville, Rice Road, uh, Bischoff, and um, uh, not town, let's see. You mentioned Gilson. Gilson, that's the other one, Gilson. Um, we're going to try and keep traffic down. Unfortunately, we know how box trucks and GPS goes. The Lindenville Bridge has been hit twice. Um, we're doing our best to make sure 
that doesn't happen. There's only so much we can do, but we have uh, done that. We have straightened the sign on Martinsville Road for the weight limit, was leaning way over. It is now up nice and straight. Um, we are very nervous about Martinsville Road. We have looked into it as deep and as best as we can do. Um, if there is issues, please just give me a call. Just give me a call, send me an email. Um, we'll see what we can do. Uh, duration of construction? So I believe their initial um, project schedule is to, you know, beginning of September. Um, that was, you know, from the today start date, so it might be shifted to uh, middle of September. Should be about right. Yeah. yeah. So I just doesn't, I don't, I haven't been in town today, but the sign was saying June 5th, you know, obviously it didn't start. Changed. Just, no, so it's being yeah. changed. Yeah. Right. Yeah. So, I think we all do what we want to. Yeah, so I'm up there with tape. <laughs> I haven't run the local kids to dial into it. <laughs> So, I mean, the, more, the most challenging part will be for the, the contractor to trench and burn the utilities. That'll be kind of the biggest lift, I think, at the start of the project, just making sure all the utilities are, you know, have their blessing of what's been trenched in the ground before they kind of cover it up. Um, and then it'll be, you know, the, the intersection curbing and creation. What's nice is we're taking away pavement. So, you know, it, we're just gonna kind of close it up. Um, their curbing contractor and other excavation ones should be pretty, um, you know, this is, this is a fairly, I would say small project, but it, the, the area is fairly small. So it won't take them terribly long to, to kind of like create the new intersection. So, and then obviously you'll have like landscaping, the pouring of the concrete for the sidewalks, and then finally the, the nice smooth paving and the new pavement and the markings, um, and, the, and the trees to be inserted in the green. So this, hopefully it'll be, it'll be um, great for, and, you know, in the fall for the community to enjoy a little bit before the snow flies, so. <laughs> Mm -hmm. You want to talk about 4th of July? Yes, 4th of July. Um, the contractors said they would remove all their equipment for the 4th of July off-site. Uh, so 4th of July will go on as normal. Obviously the floor will be covered, but down the dirt in some places. But as far as equipment and them, you won't even know they were here. The grade the room's the same, nothing's changing. The vendors, everything right out behind the rack. Um, Prairie Road's going to come right down Main Street. Um, they can go either go up Creechy Road or Route 5 South. Or, yes. And they originally thought they would store the equipment down by the Great Barn, and we said no to that. It would really need all that space for all the days. Um, so, yeah. Yeah. so then you won't even know they were here. Yeah. Yeah. I think we have a couple of online questions. Yeah, two hands up. All right. And, uh, Let's go with Chuck first. Chuck first, he's first. Yes, hello. Uh, my name is Chuck Fenton. And my question is referring back to what Rita was talking about a moment ago about the utilities and the primary contractor. And my question is, are the utilities, the four utilities, are they contractors or are they subcontractors on the project? They are neither. Uh, the utilities are working in partnership with the contractor because, you know, the contractor is not, um, they're not subs under the contractor. They're just standalone organizations, um, but we are in partner coordination with the four of them. But my understanding is they're being paid by the town of Heartland and they're doing work for the town of Heartland. So are they contractors to the town of Heartland? How does that work? So the town is paying for the utility work in conjunction with the intersection project. Knotts does not have, I would say oversight. Is that the word? Yeah. Oversight 
of the utility companies, um, I would say we are partners. Um, the town is paying. The utility is providing a service. For providing a service, and the town is paying separately um, for for their service to, to make this trenching and burying happen. If that makes sense. So, so they are contractors to the town. I mean, they these are independent operators, so they must be contractors that are working for the town doing this project. Is that correct? This be a terminology issue. I mean, the town yeah, is going to sign a contract with the utilities to provide a service to correct. the clients. Yeah. So I guess my my so final question. So this is a double bargain. No. This would be a double bargain in this case because we're paying uh, the utilities separately as well as there'd be a single market for that. Correct. Did, did that answer, answer your question, Chuck? Did well, I, I, could, I, I couldn't understand the last response. I think it was from David. Yeah, Chuck, uh, what I'm saying is if you go contract to subcontract to subcontract, you create an additional set of markups, which is not the case. Uh, it's town to contractor, town to subcontractor, in some cases, not all the cases. So I, I think we're moving to try to keep the double markers in control as much as possible. Was that a fair statement? Again, I'm very open to criticism. So they are, they are, they are a separate contractor to the town. I piggyback on that just for a second. Yep. Have we signed, has the town signed contracts with all the relevant yes. utilities? Yes. Uh, so VTEL, VTEL, Comcast, and First Light. Uh, first Light contract I have, VTEL and Comcast have emailed me that they're going to get it to me, and I emailed them a second time, and they're still going to get it to me. <laughs> Consolidated, um, they're not doing any work. No. They're, they're, yeah, so there's, there's no contract with Consolidated. So it sounds like we still have a couple of time. Yeah. Correct. Okay. So I guess the conclusion to my question then is if these are contractors and it is a considerable amount of money, was that competitively bid, please? Uh, but the not, not sure with the utilities? Can, yeah, 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 yeah. It's only a, it's a single utility check or, or multiple standalone utilities. It's not a bid situation. Right. Well, all of those utilities use subcontractors to do work for them. For example, VTEL, we all know that VTEL uses subcontractors, and we've all seen during storm response that GMP uses subcontractors. So I guess my question is, was that was their requisitions competitively bid? Uh, Not as a part of this. answer, right, for what the utilities did in terms of how they staff the project. That is not part so, of our... Right oversight for this particular project and the funding source. So the utilities are their own separate entity and they staff at their own rate and provide equipment at their own, you know, cost as a service to the town. And do they, they own their own lines. Yeah. So they are the ones that have that decision making abilities, correct? Yeah. You hear that, Chuck? Uh, well, yes, I did, but I just don't understand how that necessarily means that there couldn't be a competitive process. In other words, you're just taking each competitive, each utility, you're taking them at their word that that's the cost that they need to have to do the work. And that's why they're called oligopolies. We have no, no control over what they do. They determine. Thank you. See other question too. Uh, Ellen? Uh, yeah. Hello. Good evening, Hi. Yeah, I have two questions and it, um, it's about the library, access to the library. Will there be any closings or no access to the library? And number two, if there are, has the library staff been informed of those? Um, dates of, of, any new, of any no access to that location? Thank you, Helen. 
So for the entire project, all businesses and all accesses will remain open and accessible to all traffic. Um, if there is a certain closure that's needed that will be blocking a certain driveway, the contractor will let Everett know and we will inform uh, the property owner as needed. Um, the closure won't be, you know, like in a very long duration. Um, so, and as, so as, what's, as what's a very long duration? Is it like a day or whatever? Because the library has things that are planned and scheduled for right. kids all yeah. through the summer. Plus, the yep. food shelf, kids grab and go, um, is on the library shelf. And I just was interested in knowing if there will be no access to it. No, there there will unlikely be um, any closure to the library road or to, you know, the, the driveway accesses, especially with the library, because the contractor is starting at that end of the project. So once they are done growing utilities and things like that, they're going to move up into the intersection. Um, I don't believe there sh are any anticipated closures for the access to the library. Okay, thank you. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Anyone else in the queue? Anybody else? Uh, nope. Not really enough. Mm -hmm. uh, never it. Um, the question that I hope you can use your experience to answer. Um, uh, we all know that phases of the project start like where we are now, we a lot of planning, um, a lot of debate on expense, but we're all believing that we're going to hit all the milestones and life is going to be great, there won't be much dust and there will be no delays. Um, um, how do we maintain communication to, to, to the town when things may, you know, we may get into the heat of July or August and things may not be on schedule and so on. But what, what's your experience about keeping that level of communication going? I think we'll start off with the, the weekly, you know, so, you know, I think by staying weekly and then they're, like, they're actually developing already a project schedule list. We're looking for something more, a complete breakdown, which I should be getting uh, this Wednesday. Something a little bit more elaborate. There's probably nothing that we'll share, you know, at that point with everybody, only because no one can make a schedule that's going to stick, you know, for the whole project. So certain things do happen, certain things have to change, um, which we'll we'll be modifying as they go. But so we can we can modify that, and they've got a deadline. Uh, doesn't mean to, because this says uh, early, September. early September. I mean, the, not sure, you know, offhand, so October the deadline maybe. Substantial completion in the contract is October 15th. So they really could go to October 15th and still be within the contract. Right. Mm -hmm. Other than that, there's liquidated damages after the 15th. Right. But I think, um, from what I understand, um, they have other jobs after us. So I think it would be in also their best interest to stay on schedule if they uh, can then move on to their other scheduled jobs. Yeah, because they've got a lot of work lined up, yeah. so they don't want to waste time here. You know, right. they want to be they efficient. Want to, they want to get in, do the job correctly, and yeah. and you know, finish up. One other thing I could say is, you're adding this. Um, I mentioned to you guys earlier. It's probably a good thing this bid when it was bid, uh, because right now they would probably not even think about this job if it was on the street right now to bid on. They've got that much lined up, and they're, but they're local. They're they're a good local company. Um, you know, just the next town up part. You know, if you go to Lebanon, you'll see them all over the place in Lebanon. Uh, they're probably in White River right now as well somewhere. Okay. We got a question over here. Sure. What are the conditions? What would stop the project for the day? You know. Oh yeah, hard, hard rain would stop it. A light rain would not stop it. But it depends what's but going on. Lightning. Yeah. Uh, probably slow it down a little bit. You usually don't get thunder lightning all day long. Right. Uh, it's not usually quick thunder shadow going through, so that probably wouldn't stop it for a day. It'd be more of a heavy rain, something northeastern storm coming up through. Winds. Irene, Irene, probably wouldn't stop it. Wind, I was going to say winds. Yeah. Wind, eh, 
Uh, well, well, a little they're it depends ready to on like what they're doing, right? Yeah, if they're getting ready to move the structure on the days of heavy rains, probably they're not going to, I'm sure they're not going to do it. Or even set some of the vaults on a heavy rainy day. Right. Rainy windy day. Um, and like police school, uh, the Hartland Elementary School was the last day is the 14th? 14th. 14th. Yes. Yeah. And we have, we, we, I've made communication. With the school? Yeah. Yes. Yeah. Great. Okay. Yes, she did. Good. Any questions, Chris? <laughs> Any additional questions? For... And again, I'll maintain continuous communication with Martin every day, twice, three times a day, four times a day. And our website, needed, our so. website is as up to date as it's going to be. Please spread the word that the website is up to date as best as can be. If you're watching this, sir, you know I've been on it quite a bit in the last few days about the project. Um, just be patient. That's all we have to say. And, and my office will be downstairs, actually. Yes. So everyone will be on site. Thank you all for your patience. Bye. Thank you, Thank you. 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 Why don't we take just a few minutes break? Okay, uh, are we back? We're back. Okay. Uh, the next item of business is the um, budget update. Martin? Yes. One. All right, so we'll start with the general fund revenue. Hold on, one second. Yes. Yep, that's fine. Okay, we set. We set. So the general fund revenue on page one, if you looked at the ARPA transfer in, that's the money we transferred in this year from the ARPA funds for our payroll. If you take that million forty-eight out of the total general fund revenue of three million sixty-seven one sixty-nine, it leaves us about a forty thousand dollars more than what we expected to collect this year. Unaudited at this point. Any questions on the revenue side? General fund expenses, as you can see, we, we have stayed pretty much right in budget through the end of May. We're at 92%. Um, on page 10 of 10, you'll see. Hold on, hold on, hold on. Yep. Sorry. I can go through each department, but they're all pretty well on budget, except the library is over budget. Page 10 of 10, you will see the transfer out to the bridge fund was one of the articles at the town meeting. I, I made that entry. Uh, you'll see a transfer out for three corners. So the bond money came in in the 2022 fiscal year. Um, the auditors realized that about um, when we were balancing out at the ninth hour. So we left it in the general fund for 2022. Fiscal year 2023, which we're in, I made up fund 44, the three corners project. I have transferred the money out of the general fund. So it showed as a surplus last year. So this year it shows a deficit, but it's really not and put it into Fund 44, the Three Corners project. So all the income we get from Three Corners goes into this fund. All the expenses come out of this fund. So we can quickly track the expenses or the income for this for the Three Corners project. So it won't get commingled in the general fund and we have to go looking for numbers. So that's why that's on there. If you take that out, at the end of May, we are at 91% of the 92% budget. So we are on track as far as the general fund expenses. At the end of this fiscal year, I expect the general fund to be 1% uh, below the hunt. Well, I expect it to be at 99%. I'm expecting the general fund to have about a 15 to $18,000 surplus. 
So between the revenues and the general fund expenses, my guess, unaudited at this point, is about $50,000. It could be less, it could be more, but that's my best guesstimate at this point. Mary, I have a question. Uh, is the 35K for the bridge fund? It's Article 4 or 5. Is that the only article? No, so I, I just did the transfer for the covert fund for 100000 in the month of June. Okay. That was so, Article 8, I think. Even with that $100,000 transfer? So that's the surplus from last year. So that's not the surplus in 2023. That's the 2022 surplus. Yeah. Agreed. So it's not really an expense. That's correct. It's fun, it's money in the bank. It's in the fund, it's in the general fund. Yes. No, I'm expense to this one. So it's coming out of the general fund going to the culvert fund. Yeah. So, so just from one fund to another fund. So three corners, bridge fund and culvert fund, and not expenses for this year. They're just internal transfers from one account to another. That's correct. Okay. I think I got it. So, I call these enterprise funds. How many enterprise funds do you have? Different funds. Do you have a lot? 40, 42. Oh, you do. So that's how you track it. Yep. Yep. Everybody okay with the general fund? Yep. So we'll go to the highway fund. If you look at the highway fund revenue, um, I believe we're seventy-two hundred dollars over. The state of Vermont paid a little extra um, this year. So as you can see, we're just shot a little over $7,000 in revenue over on the highway fund. The highway department, I expected a bigger deficit. I'm expecting a, probably a $25,000 deficit in the highway fund. I was expecting it to be more. Um, the winter didn't cost us as much as we budgeted and we haven't spent as much on the, uh, the summer budget, so I'm expecting a smaller deficit than I planned for the highway fund through the end of the year. You, you said you're expecting us? A deficit. Of 100K. Uh, I was expecting it to be close to 80,000, but I think we're, it's only going to be about 20,000. Mm -hmm. Yep, that's my, my best guesstimate at this point. Does that reflect the, the purchase of the new trucks? Yep, well, that comes out of the equipment fund. The new truck comes out of the equipment fund. So, and, okay. No, we're in ahead. So, you have a 20K deficit? Yes. That means, would that mean that you transfer $20,000 less into the equipment fund this year? So, so if you go to, no, so if you go to page, if you go to page two of three in the highway expenses, you'll see we have the equipment fund. So on the left, we budgeted three hundred twelve thousand dollars. Of that three hundred twelve, one fifty-five, six ninety-three, we want to go to the equipment fund. So that leaves the difference to spend through the fis the fiscal year. The problem is we spent more than what we expected. So I'm expecting a transfer to the equipment fund of about one hundred and six to twelve thousand dollars instead of one hundred and fifty-five thousand. Because we spent 185, 340, and the 155 would be more than the 312. Yeah. So I'm expecting by the time we get through diesel this month, um, I'm expecting them between 106 and 112 thousand to go to the equipment fund okay. this year. But that's how you zero out the yeah. That's how you get the budget. Correct. On your highway. Yes. Yep. Do we, do we purchase anything else this year besides the pickup truck? No, nope, we've purchased nothing. Okay. Does that make sense? Yeah. Yep. Okay. So now Jim sent me an email with three bullet points on it. Uh, the equipment fund, I, I put in uh, two sheets, one audited equipment fund and one aud unaudited. So you can see at the end of the fiscal year 2022, it was audited 231, 83401. Uh, no, I'm sorry. The two should be the two. We started this fiscal year at 272, 366, 22. We bought a truck for $64,000 basically. 
I'm anticipating revenues of 106,000. I think it's going to be a little more than that, but I'm a little on the conservative side because I'm not sure what June's going to cost. So I expect the equipment fund to be 314,000 unaudited at this point. I'm expecting to buy a $200,000 truck, six wheeler, all wheel drive. So that's going to bring it by 24 or by 23? Uh, 24. They won't have it in time for 23. Mm -hmm. So it's going to hit the 24, FY24. So that's how I end up with um, the equipment fund like that. And then Jim sent another email about and during the budget process of all the trucks that we purchased. So I didn't get it to you folks in time. My apologies. Um, so this truck that we bought was slated for FY24, we just bought it in FY23. So you can see how we had it spread out. So that's the one ton for 80,000? Yes. Yeah. Correct. So you can see we had it um, set for next fiscal year. Um, I, we did it this year because the two trucks they were driving just weren't safe. They just, they just weren't safe. The sheet behind it will show you the vehicles that we have purchased over the last uh, seven years. So we delayed the grader, we delayed the six wheel, and we had another pickup truck scheduled for next year already. Right, so I bought it this year instead. Uh, you bought the one ton or the one ton? Right. So there's another pickup truck slotted for next year. Before that, it's slotted there. Um, Bill and I are still in discussions over it if we need another truck. Yeah. I'm not sure if we need another truck or not. Okay. I know we I know we got rid of two for one, but I don't know if they need another truck. Okay. Yeah, no, it's not. The greater one is the greater in the cards for next year. Um, no. Um, 26 would probably be the earliest for the greater. Um, I, unless it has detrimental issues, I think it's okay at this point. But so yeah. next year we got we have the all-wheel drive. Next year I also have a ten-wheeler, and the following year is a ten-wheeler. So we have a six-year extended service plan on the ten-wheelers. If we trade them in the fifth year, they give us an extra forty thousand dollar trade for that. Yeah. So those are slated over the next yeah. two years. I think. You know, I mean, it's up to you to build, but I think the plan was to have a second grader. Yes, so we, yes, we've talked about buying a used second grader, correct. Yeah, so that's for purchase we've delayed. Yes, that's correct. You swap. So that's here to buy, buy a second grader for $75,000 to $100,000 and have two road graders. That's correct. So that the highway team think it's their good one waiting in on the air for At this point, yes, because I'm down on the air. So yes, I think um, we should wait at least till next year and put it back on the discussion for next year. I remember my lead with this question, but um, do we really need 10 wheelers with our back roads? That's an awful big truck. It, it is a big truck. They say it's, it's more efficient. Not having to go back to get more Correct. material. Correct. Right. They can carry more more material and then carry more sand in them. Are those ones? This may sound silly, but are those ones like different four wheel drive versus? There's only one all wheel it's drive. All, it's all yeah. Yep. Yeah, the rest are wheel drive. Mm -hmm. So I I think the highway I think the equipment fund gym is on track. Yeah. Yeah. I think we're okay. Uh, Are you saying this so, is like, excuse me, this five years, about five years, so it was about a six or a ten wheeler, it was about five years of useful life? Or am I wrong? What's that? The useful life that we think is safe to operate for either a ten or a six wheel is about five years, am I correct? I mean, eight, ten, you can get eight, ten years out of them because we don't put a lot of miles on them, but the okay. problem is, so, so when we traded in 2018, we got $35,000 for a seven or eight year old 10 wheeler. We put a six year warranty on it, we're going to get $80,000 for trading in the fifth year. 
for seven thousand. So the extended service plan costs seven thousand dollars, but we're going to get forty five thousand dollars more for trading because they can sell that truck with a warranty. Yeah. And that's what I was interested in. Was there a fixed warranty or was there a choice of warranty? No, you, you, you had the warranty after the fact. Okay, all right, thank you. You're welcome. So, we bought the pickup truck that was slated for FY24. Correct. Are you now going to be moving into FY24 things that were in FY25? Because the way I read this right now, all there is is $45,000. For the form pickup. Right. So all we're looking at is the two hundred thousand dollars for the all-wheel drive, ten uh, six wheeler. And that that's gonna be my only purchase in twenty four at this point. Okay, so where is that on the list? That's what I'm asking. Um, is that the hundred and fifty thousand? Yeah, uh, no, those are the two ten wheelers. No, it's the ten uh, the six wheel uh, six wheeler, yes, so six wheeler is the eighty thousand uh, dollars. No, two hundred thousand. Two hundred thousand. Two hundred thousand. Sorry, two hundred thousand. Here. Yep. I see. So you deferred this, so now this is because the truck's here. not right. The truck's yeah. not here yet. Yeah. So that's okay. going to end up yeah. in twenty four. Yeah. That's correct. I've been asking Bill about it, and he's not in yet. Is that, is that, so that's a truck that's been ordered. Um, I don't know that answer. Okay. I know he's working with ATG, on, and ATG, our salesman knows what we need and when we need it, so he usually has it ready for us. Okay. This is very good. Thank you. You're welcome. So if we don't need another pickup, we'll put that back on budget. I'm not sure yet. Yeah, we really, it's only 5000 the first day, right? We're, we're going to fund it for us when we sign it. I couldn't hear you with that. So I said, I think if you if you don't really need to sell a pickup truck, you're pretty much back on budget. Yes. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. Uh, but the, I guess the real question is, does the highway crew need a grader? Is that a make, second grader? Make, uh, make right. Make it easier in the summertime. Right. That's what we. That's what we get. A, we get. A, we'll, we'll. I'll make sure we start talking about that. Right. That's great. Right. Appreciate all this. Absolutely. Um, does the new truck come with a standard factory warranty, years and miles? So the truck comes with a three-year, thirty-six mile bumper to bumper. Does not include brakes, maintenance items. It comes with a five year, 100,000 mile powertrain. Powertrain is internal parts of the motor, internal parts of the transmission. Alternator is not covered, air conditioner is not covered, stuff like that. Um, so, with that kind of warranty, I don't feel the need we need to buy an extended warranty. Everything's covered. Because the truck, it's a two door truck, it has automatic windows, door locks, and all that, so it doesn't have many fancy stuff above and beyond that would go. The main brain's covered under the warranty. So I think, and the turbo would be covered because it's part of the internal engine. So I believe it's, it's all set the way it is. Uh, what is the total deficit? And I went over the deficit, what I believe is, is, is going to be um, set for our. And that's all I have on the budget update. Any questions? Thank you. Clyde, you all set? Same to me. Okay. okay. Phil, it's all yours. Thank you, board. Thank you. No, it's great, Mark. I appreciate it. Absolutely. Yeah, you know, thanks for coming us. Um, okay, going on to um, old business, which the two blend together, uh, but we're talking about the uh, town manager position, um, both uh, a discussion on uh, how to do the search and what resources to use, uh, as well as the job description. Um, uh, possibly we need the first discussion to be job description um, before we consider a, re a recruiting firm. Um, uh, Jim has sent a few materials that are in the packet. Um, I mentioned to him that he sent out some information that I didn't, I didn't see until four o'clock today, so I, I didn't really read it. I did print it out and bring it with me, but um, so, so I can give you a quick, quick lowdown. So yeah, yeah. So you got the job description and some markups on it. 
Okay. Which, uh, which, which one are we talking the, about? The email I had sent previously that's in the packet, which we read, uh, was the original job description with some additions that were highlighted in yellow. Uh, I had sent that to the LCT probably about two weeks ago to get their input. Uh, Jill was on vacation. She responded today uh, and she sent uh, some additional disclaimers to put at the end of your job description. Mm -hmm. She made some, you know, kind of wording changes, you know, I don't remember the exact words offhand, but words that were more appropriate. And she added some information about uh, developing the performance evaluation process. So I, I reviewed her changes today. They all were very logical and made sense, mm -hmm. right? So I sent you her original that she sent with her notes and comments. And then I took those changes and incorporated them into a master and sent you a clean master with no markup as well. Okay. Uh, the bottom line is it's BLCT reviewed and she's, her changes have been incorporated. That was sent out today. Yeah, yeah, I just thought it was small. In the job description, we can continue to modify it when we need to at a later date. Yeah, I'm a firm believer that a strong candidate would write a cover letter to the job description, tying their skills to what we lay out as the job description. Right. So we'd like to get it as close to you know, what we feel is, is correct. Um, um, okay, let me try and look at the right one. <clears throat> so, Jim, the one we should be looking at is has a subtitle updated June 5th. Uh, today is June 5th, so that would have been the one I sent today. It today. has all of Jill's okay. corrections in it. Um, the one sent previously that's in the select four packet is you know, just as good if you assume that yeah. Joel's corrections are sent. Mm -hmm. Okay, colleagues, how do we tackle this? So, I just, I didn't see this email, so I'm, I'm just kind of zipping through. You know, I can give you a quick rundown of what her changes were, if that's helpful. Yeah. Uh, the weren't, you know, weren't that handy. So I think I have a, a, a slightly different approach. Um, so I don't think that a job description that we have associated with the job advertisement necessarily is going to be what we have to be uh, I don't want to say stuck with it. That shouldn't be necessarily the final, the, the final draft. The other thing is, we're going to have a contract with the new town manager, and so you can get, you know, we can get into more discussion. I mean, there is going to be a certain degree of discussion regarding um, what we want this person to do and what they think they want to do uh, in life. So, I think that. <coughs> trying to sort of get a, a, uh, a final draft of a job description before we, before we can start to advertise. I don't think it's necessary, to be honest with you. I think what, we can use whatever draft we want, but as we go along, because we're going to be hiring someone, I think the person that we hire, they may have some comments as well. Mm -hmm. You know, personally, I have never seen a job description this long. This okay. long, this is, it is long. this is, a, it's a, and you know, uh, generally it's much more. It, it's they're, they're a little more generic, general, and then in the contract you get into 
to the, the specifics of it all. So, uh, I personally think it's best tonight to decide who we want to help us in the hiring and then start to meet with those people with some of those things. That would be, that would be my, my idea. Uh, so having said that, in the job description, we're asking for a minimum of five years of experience. I think that is really, really wishful thinking for a small community like we have as a town manager. I, I think we should lower that standard and maybe they're doing other things. And there's some, some, some phrasing that is you know, usually used commensurate with your experience, or whatever it could be. You know, uh, in that same area, um, do we really need to be specific to say we want a bachelor's degree in public administration or business management? Um, again, are we slicing it to? Well, or we just can say a bachelor's degree probably is preferred. Yeah, just leave like it. Yeah, whatever, yeah, yeah. whatever term you know, we want to use. Yeah. Well, you, you have an note in there where promote additional experience, maybe substitute for a degree. So the help is already built in. Yeah. Oh, the third bullet point? Yeah. Yeah. <clears throat> yeah. Well, Tom, uh, I think you have a very valid point. Um, and that's why we're here starting this discussion. I, mean, a, I, um, I would dare say this is new for the five of us who weren't involved with the previous search. So we have a chance to, to conduct a search to the best uh, of our ability, knowing um, some of the characteristics of what we clearly want in the individual, uh, as well as being cognizant of um, of, of the pressures in the Upper Valley right now to hire, hire town managers. Um, um, what I'm familiar with in my past is that you have a short blurb for an ad. Right. Um, and then the first thing that ad said, you know, please request the full job description of this. Mm -hmm. and, and, then, and then you're off and running um, on that part. Um, so, um, Jim, you laid out a, a, a couple Jim, of things. Thank you for your work, by the way. Yeah. I think it's great. Um, so, um, uh, Mandy and Clyde, do you feel maybe we should just go after, uh, as Jim and Tom, I believe, are saying, let's go after the, the search firm, per se? I'm hearing them say, well, I'm, I'm hearing Jim want to put this out, and Tom not so much. Is that what you're? Yeah, it, well, I think not they can be. I think they can be done around. Yeah. I think we ought to agree that we, you know, with the BLCT changes, we had a starting point for job description. Actually, right, because whatever search firm, if any, that we use is going to need that starting point. Yeah. Yeah. We can circle back to it <laughs> and make changes as needed right, as we get deeper into the process. Mm -hmm. Sure, sure, and from. The document that we're seeing is the, the latest version that we received today. I think we should uh, extract out of that what we feel are the important characteristics that in turn would go to an ad. Yeah, and, and I think the search firm will help us yes. develop the ad. Sure. So yeah, that's sure. uh, their area. They better at the cost of the cost. Yeah, so. uh, yeah, I do have good stuff to say, which can is not popular. Is there a sense of immediacy? I mean, well, I, I don't want to see us rush to judge me if I get sort of not a But is there a rush to immediacy? Where? Mine seems to be holding the fort very well. I, I just don't know. Yeah, good observation, Dave. Uh, I mean, we, we, um, here it is June 5th, and on, um, April the 30th, we received a resignation from Dave. Um, the intersection was our primary focus for tonight. Um, you know, uh, we have to get going on the safety, so we need to get started on this. And I think, as people have said, um, 
if we go the route of hiring someone to uh, facilitate the search, work with us or conduct the search, um, we don't know who's available. We've got to get that started. So the reason I ask is clearly it's basically law of supply and demand. As somebody said here, uh, and the paper says there's a, a number of guys that are looking for management, including the other side of the river. Yeah. Uh, and I think the supply piece of it, an uh, educational background, certainly should fit in. Like if you say three years, but somebody's got a master's in civics or whatever is related, you feel like you can, you can be flexible. I, I, I don't know if I'm phrasing my question right. And I'll, I'll rephrase it. Is there a sense of immediacy and uh, is there a sense of flexibility as to qualifications? So, so uh, can, can I get my own two cents? So, so I think we'll continue to talk about qualifications and how we want to lower or raise the bar. Yeah. So that discussion can continue to happen. Um, as a person who's hired a lot of people, um, I would say that you need to act quickly, deliberately, uh, especially if you have a small resource pool and you're in competition with other towns. Right? And in July and August, people with jobs aren't generally looking for jobs, they're going on summer vacation. So if we don't act quickly, you could be looking at November, December before we get this job built. Thank you. And it may mean that we don't like any of the candidates. Right. And we're stuck with Mark. <laughs> Start all over again. <laughs> so, but we're just starting the process. Why would that gateway have been folded? Stop it. <laughs> so, please use your networking skills to get the word out. <laughs> Don't overrate my networking skills. Okay. <laughs> Third question. Okay. Um, I really don't know. Um, any of the players that Jim, you've identified, and Tom, you've mentioned uh, that you're familiar with one or two of them. Right? Yeah, I know all. Um, so, Jim, do you want to lead us through? I guess I'm looking at a doc document um, yeah. from May 31st where you highlighted um, Aggie Freeman Municipal yeah, Resources. And the laptop is great. So. Okay, so Abby Friedman is BLC too. Um, she's not committing to having bandwidth right now. So she's got, it, it sounds like her, she's got one person. I can't, don't quote me on that because like, she may reach out to others, but that person's already engaged. And they have another pending contract that may or may not be signed. So Abby was reluctant even to send references because she wasn't confident that she could take the project down. Mm -hmm. uh, which, but she did recommend the other two. Right. Uh, and I spoke with Don McCloud, who did the recruitment for Woodstock, and he recommended uh, Municipal Resources Inc. Uh, so that was kind of an independent recommendation from the LCT. So I thought that you know, somebody with his experience making that recommendation was helpful. Right? Uh, and if you look at uh, music, Municipal Resources Inc., and you can't read the other one because my page is cut off. Um, is it Municipal, municipal management, management Services? Right? Uh, hmm. The contracts are roughly, you know, the, the services and prices are fairly close. Uh, the second entity allows add-on services to actually negotiate the contract, but I think we may be better off using our lawyer to go through that contract negotiation. Uh, so MRI, Municipal Resources Inc. seemed like a good option. Uh, and they've done a ton of work in this area. So, you know, their reference list and their town list is pretty extensive of where they've done recruitments. 
uh, Tom Yenero, uh, you know, has done a lot of uh, acting town manager jobs or interim town manager jobs. And I think he's getting into the recruitment aspect of this at this point. So, you know, not necessarily a bad option, but, you know, I think Lamar Ryan probably has more extensive experience. Mm -hmm. Now, I do have, I did check one reference that they both work with. Really. So, Thetford used MRI twice and was very pleased with their recruitment process. Uh, they also had Tom working as their interim manager, in -term town manager during that recruitment process. Mm -hmm. So, so basically, they're recommending Tom as an intern, but MRI as a recruitment firm. So, just to get things started, I think we should uh, not consider the LCP given their price. I think it's a lot of money for what we're what we're going to get. Yeah, and their availability is oh, sketching. Yeah. Mm -hmm. the ability. Mm -hmm. What are the biggest um, gains from going to a um, to a search firm? Well, I mean, for you know, five to seven thousand dollars, they've got experience doing ads. They've got networks with people that. You know, they can reach out to and may be interested. They have good experience screening resumes and working for the right skill sets. We could do that, right? But, you know, meeting two hours twice a month we, would take us a long time to right. try to get through those basic tasks. Uh, to me, uh, it's the first two things you mentioned that are the, the assets. Um, um, where to advertise. That, um, you know, uh, and, and possibly a networking list that they might have, um, and and uh, and then um, what we've been bantering about is they helping us to refine what the job ad would, would yeah. actually be. Um, and, and if needed, they can participate with the interview process and can suggest yeah. questions, screening tools. Yeah, I don't feel. A real pressing need. Um, I don't think this is a national search that's going to show up with a hundred resumes that we need. No, hours of screening time. Um, yeah, based on my discussions five years ago, you would have gotten a hundred resumes. I understand. Yeah. I understand. Today, I fall yeah. asleep on my couch reading resumes. Today, you're lucky to get twenty, and you're lucky to get three or four qualified candidates. Right. Right. Um, yeah. Um, so I don't, you know, some of these firms are offering like an hourly service versus the flat rate. And, um, that's, one, that's one of the reasons I want to be clear about what we as a board are going after when we're looking at one of these firms. Um, um, Tom, what do you think? What are the so I've worked with MRI. Uh, they do a lot of, they do a lot of work, but they become more of a recruitment firm. Um, I so in full disclosure, I know Tom Yenero. Uh, I worked with him a lot when he was a Springfield town manager. Is Tom the principal in the firm? Tom, it's a he's a one person shop. Okay. And uh, and then I also I know Tom when he was working in uh, in in Tedford. He's got a lot of experience uh, as a town manager. In his very, very practical experience, and he, you know, he was in Woodstock, and he was now in Thetford. He sort of has a really good understanding of what's happening in this area, and I think his pricing is fair. You know, a lot of the stuff that they do is kind of boilerplate. They all sort of use the same ads uh, and, and the like. I think what's really going to help us. Is the questions to ask candidates and names. 
into maybe even prepare us as far as what we might get for for candidates. I agree wholeheartedly with Jim. With all the stuff we have going on, we just don't have time. I mean, it was heart wrenching what we heard today about what happened on Marcus Hill Road. No response. We have to address our policing issue. To me, that's so critically important. So um, that's my that's my thought. Yeah. Uh, <coughs> what is your, your, your um, chance to go through this? Yeah, yeah. Actually, as I'm as I was looking through all of them, I actually um, I liked the the looks of the of Tom and Mel. Part of it was that he's local. He's from Vermont. Um, New Hampshire is not that far away, but it looked like they were uh, doing a lot with more New Hampshire and Massachusetts, which right. is a slightly different vibe than you know Harlem or not. Where he's he's local, he's yeah, a few towns now. Mm -hmm. um, MRI has got a pretty good list of Vermont towns. Mm -hmm. Yep. Quiet and news lots. Well. <coughs> Just well, like Mandy said, if you've got somebody that's local, they have a feel of what you need more than you know, someone who way has an opinion of what we need, and here's somebody who kind of knows what we need. Um, part of my reaction about the reading resumes and in, in the interview process, I'm, I'm, um, I, I, I just uh, shared with a search committee I'm on um, interview questions uh, that I've been developing with other search groups um, and, and they're generic in nature with specifics about the job. Um, and again, I don't think we've received so many resumes and we can't read them. Um, I certainly uh, think we should go this route, um, and, uh, and, and this, you know, I guess I'd like to talk with this with uh, Tom and just sort of get a sense of. Uh, um, have you spoken with him? Uh, you have. And what, what's what is he suggesting he would like to offer? Is that what this what's written here? Yeah. Okay. So, I mean, yeah, there's two decent choices here. Right? One of those choices, their bread and butter is recruitment. The other choice, their bread and butter is being a town manager in Vermont who's trying to get into the recruitment arena. Okay. Um, I'm not going to complain if we go one way or the other. We just, yeah, I think we just need to decide and we need to make a motion that the town manager start working on a contract and I can assist with that process. Uh, any other thoughts? Municipal Management Services. Uh, Municipal Management Services. And we invite him to our next meeting to discuss, or we have Martin discuss uh, contract terms. Or I think to me, it seems like he'll either do a fixed price or he'll do an hour right here. Uh, I'm wondering if it was D5. If it would be able to just come to. Uh, uh, I mean, as you said, uh, you know, I think we could close our eyes and write that board the plate that's already on there. I'd right. uh, um, um, uh, like to get a sense of this the scale. Yeah, so let's say it's invited to the next board. Okay. Yeah, I, I think the option that we would go with, that we go with Tom. Is the hourly rate not to exceed, right? And the first six items under his list of ten. Yeah. 
Yeah. Okay, I think so, we have a motion on the floor. Yeah, no second. Okay. So, can we just clarify the motion? The yeah, motion is, he's, yeah. He's, he's doing some incredible research there. Uh, so, uh, at his rate of 65 an hour, I just did the math, so it's roughly 140 hours for $9,000. Or we can pay him on an hourly rate. 140 hours? Yeah, they have 65 divided to uh, 9,000 divided by 60. Yeah, so Tom, look at, the, look at the second paragraph here, the short paragraph, and focus on that one. Right. right. So he's saying 65 an hour not to exceed 4,436, 4, mm -hmm. yeah. with additional costs for advertising. Right. And there will be an additional cost for that branch. Mm -hmm. So my math brought that up to for this packet fund. Um, and it's cut off. My math brought that up to you know, max of seven and a half K. So we can make a motion to, you know, work with Tom to draft the contract not to exceed seven and a half K and we can we can talk to them about what services will be available. Do you want to restate your, your motion? Yeah, I think oh. Jim just did a friendly yeah. amendment. Oh, okay. Uh, Cheyenne, did you get that? Put, yeah. put that down in the cost <laughs> <laughs> Okay. Want to take a stab at radiant, Cheyenne? Mm -hmm. So I have the motion that you made at first, and then amended by Jim. Can you read the whole thing just so? Oh, okay. Yeah, do you want to restate it just so that we're clear? So, I'll make a friendly amendment to Tom's motion and suggest that we uh, authorize our town manager to negotiate a contract with Tom Yano not to exceed Seven thousand five hundred uh, to do a recruitment search for new town managers. To include the advertising in background. Which includes advertising in background checks. Yes. Uh, is there a second? I'll second it. Okay. Discussion. Um, I had thought. We were going to bring ask Tom to come to a meeting to present himself. Yeah. Before we had a motion for entering into a contract. So well, that motion was basically saying, Tom, come to the meeting with we'll, this contract. We'll negotiate a contract. Did I say negotiate? Yeah. yeah. The contract would have to be approved by this board when the time comes. And what he's saying is, we want to invite him to come to the meeting. With the understanding that we, we potentially will offer him a contract for $7,000, and we would like to know what he will do for us. What, that, what, what will be the activities he will do for us for that amount? I'm comfortable with that. Okay. So, so that when he comes to the meeting on mo that Monday's meeting, he, he we have all of the information that we can make. I want to be able to yay or nay him and not prolong this so, sure. longer. Yeah. So the way I would envision this is at that meeting, we would have a draft contract that Martin and I worked with him to get on paper, right? He would come and explain the contract, what his services are, how he's gonna approach things, and we'd decide at that point whether we're gonna approve it. And with the MP, we just talk, ask him, and see like, whether you like it. Yeah. Right. And you, work you don't like it, you don't sign the contract. Right. 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 Okay. Does that make sense, though? Yeah. Um, I'm a little queasy. Uh, I like let's let's launch it, uh, and uh, I'm going to check these references. Um, oh, absolutely. Oh, before, oh, before yeah, yeah. yeah, and it's all going to be subject to reference yeah. checks. Yes, and yeah, that's all it's for. Yeah. So, Phil, I do have a brief. I did have a brief email from Sharon Carpy that that person I was forwarding. I'll forward everyone that email from Pepper. Okay, please, Jim. That would be good. Okay. Uh, so we have a motion to second it. Any more discussion? All, all in favor say aye. 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 Nay. Any against? Aye. 
It's unanimous. Okay. Uh, okay. Do we want to declare victory, or do we want to wade into the trial description at this point? Take a victory lap. And... Okay. Let's do that. Um, so we'll leave the job description as a work in progress at this point. Uh, I would just suggest that we use that job description as a starting point with whoever we hire. Yeah. Are they going to make their adjustments to it? Yeah. yeah. Let's just have the final one that you sent out today. When I haven't even looked at it. Yeah. So we'll just use that one. Yeah. So. So I sent you, so you, you know, when you open it, I sent you out Rita's, uh, Jill Muir's feedback. So she edited the document, sent it to me, and then I sent you out a clean copy without all the markup that has all the okay. feedback. Okay. Right. Um, and it looks like it's four pages. Yeah, it's still four pages. Yeah. <laughs> I can make the font small. All right, all right, here you. Um, okay. Um, then I think we are set to move on. Um, yes. Okay. Morton, we're on for your update. Okay. Yes. So I just wanted to send out a friendly reminder to our committees and commissions that the meetings need to be posted 48 hours in advance at Damon Hall, Mike's Mobile, North Harlem Post Office, and since Harlem has a website, it has to be posted on the website 48 hours. Please keep this in mind. If you need an emergency meeting, that's fine. You have 24 hours, but it's the exact same process. So I just wanted to remind our committees and commissions, please, Remember these rules for open meeting rules. And your minutes for each meeting, you have five business days, whether it's Saturday or Sunday, let me take out the business. You have five days to get those to Brian to get posted. They're called draft minutes. They don't have to be edited. Uh, we need them within five days, please. Weekends do count. The fiscal year 2023 is coming to an end here on June 30th. I have reached out to all the departments, the department heads, the committees and commissions, if they have uh, any lingering expenses going into the uh, invoices that we may not get in time, they're just kind of giving a heads up of what's going on. Uh, the Ford 550 is back into action. It came back last week from Claremont. Uh, that transmission job will cost us $100 under warranty. Great. Martin, is that the truck that has the um, the grass cedar? Yes, that's correct. That's the truck. So we have that back so they, they can lay um, to keep the dust down when they grade the road. Uh, no, that, what I was asking is uh, we have ditches that were dug that have not been seeded yet with grass seed. Yes, that would be the one to that do. That would be the one as yep. well. Yep, okay. and I will touch. Um, I'm glad. Thank you for the reminder. Um, I will remind Bill that we need to get the ditches. Uh, the GMC was delivered on May 31st with a plow and the sander, a uh, seven and a half foot plow. They've taken the sander out uh, for the summertime. Will that be in the parade? Um, we, can, we can make that happen. Doug Harrington's last day was actually June 1st. Um, we as the town of Harlan would like to thank Doug for his 16 years and seven months of dedication. We appreciate his endless hours of plowing, sanding, salting, and grading our roads, as well as the many years of maintaining the equipment for the town. We wish you the best on your new endeavor. The highway department is now Downing Man. We will move along with, we will move along with what um, the department can handle and hope for the patience of the townspeople as we will do the best we can while we're down. We have uh, advertised on Indeed. I've received three resumes. Um, we're going to put it on AOT with the state of Vermont and see if we can grab anybody else. Um, unlike 2018 and 2019 where we got 30 to 40 resumes when we put the, this position out. Uh, so we are 
currently actively looking for a highway person, so we will see how that, that proceeds. John Pallett is our assistant town clerk and our ordinance officer. He does each job 20 hours a week. The ordinance officer he uh, is stepping down from. Um, I asked him if he'd be kind enough to give me 30 days. So June 30th will be John Pallett's last day as the ordinance officer. Um, we will start looking for an ordinance officer probably in the month of July or August. Um, obviously I want to get the highway up and rolling as soon as possible. Uh, Phil and I were looking to see how we can get an ordinance officer uh, rehired. We have, a, we have a select board meeting slated for July 3rd. I wanted to ask the board tonight if they wanted to change it to the 5th since the 4th is a holiday. That's a Wednesday or something? Yes. So the July 4th is a Tuesday. So, so like, what's the real, the real holiday of the 4th? That's correct. Tuesday the 4th. So Monday is not a holiday. Monday is not a holiday, but a lot of people take Monday off so they can have a long day, a four day weekend. So and the parade, the parade is Tuesday? on schedule on Tuesday at 10 o'clock, yes. That means you have to take another day off. We, that means we can take another day off. <laughs> <laughs> so I just wanted to see where the board was at, at, at for the July, first meeting of July. I mean, I'm flexible. The Monday is an official work day, but if you guys want to move it to Wednesday, it's fine. <laughs> I wasn't sure if anybody's going to be out of town or. I think I am. <laughs> There's always one. Uh, all right, let's go with the July 5th. Okay. People are going to have July 5th? July 5th. July 5th it is. Thank you. <laughs> and uh, that's all I have for uh, uh, That's all I have. More, um, again, you and I have just spoken briefly, but um, will you um, have a job kind of exit interview with John to catch um, what he sees as the challenges that he's experienced with the ordinance position. Absolutely, I'd be glad to. And it, it would be, uh, I think, useful for us to reflect on to see mm -hmm. what we have going on. Yes. Um, we also have a position that's ordinance slash um, planning. Um, so have we dropped the planning piece out of this position? No, I don't. I don't think so. Um, I uh, was on the Two Rivers website like, this afternoon, um, and, and I realized they're searching for a planner right now. And I asked Rita, uh, but I'll talk to Peter Gregory about this. That if they have any resumes of very junior people, or you know, maybe we could potentially, you know, get that resume. Oh yeah, absolutely. Uh, I'm a little hesitant. Uh, because I don't, I don't know who that person. If you have the capacity to sort of be working with a your planner, um, but I think it's something, an opportunity you really should work. Oh, absolutely. Yeah. Okay. Let's just throw a couple of comments. One is, you know, we had John working as a three-quarter FTD, right? Fifty. Well, point five. Didn't his hours increase when he took on the additional responsibility? So we, we hired him as a part-time town clerk. Yeah. So 20 hours a week. Right. But when is it when his role when he became increased? when he came ordinance, we gave him 20 hours for that, so he was a full-time full -time. person. Okay. But it was so now he's going back to half time. That's correct. So the question becomes, did we include a full-time position in the budget for next year? Yes, we did. I thought we did. Yeah, so we did. One, so we included one and a half FTEs. So we have, we have John as a part-time town clerk, and we have an ordinance officer uh, in, in the budget. Yes, at four hours. Yeah, okay. yes, at full time. That's correct. Okay. The so second thing I just throw out to think about is, you know, what does the town need most? And I like, you know, we need to do ordinances. We, you know, got that responsibility. Planning, maybe. Grant writing, maybe. Um, you know, like, there may be more value in having that grant writing responsibility in that position. Sure, sure. Well, you're putting your finger on why I really want to have that discussion on the next responsibility of the next town manager. Okay. Yeah. Because I think if we are looking ahead, uh, Mr. Armiston jumped us from one style of town manager to the style he had 
and I think I think we're ready to make progress again. Yeah. You know, on that on that floor. Absolutely. And I also saw that job description. There's some duties of the town manager that actually an ordinance person should have could do, like yeah. floodplain so, management mm -hmm. and but things mm -hmm. like that. Health officer even maybe. You know. Yeah. Uh, so I, I think planning. Um, that's why I was hesitant to sort of say we're going. If someone walked into to the office tomorrow, I'm not sure we we are we're ready to hire that planner at this point. No, but uh, well, or we can hire him, but not give him a job description. <laughs> <laughs> duties as other other duties. As, as <laughs> okay, moving on. We had a Mayor Campbell request uh, that we we. Um, uh, heard already from Martin, and I, what we need to do tonight is um, uh, a recognize that request and have a motion that we have actually approved it. Uh, I don't have the numbers here. Let me just pass this down. <laughs> Boy, she, she ran away from that. <laughs> okay. Um, we did approve the 418. Yes. Okay. That's what the synopsis is. So I'm looking for a motion to um, to uh, expend spend monies from the Merrick Campbell Fund in the amount of 418.88 um, for a town requester. Um, do I need to to say what? Nope, Mayor Cam nope, Mayor Campbell. Okay. Request. I second that motion. Or first or whatever. Okay. Uh, I, I'll, okay, but there's a second. I, I just made the motion. Yeah. Uh, all in favor say aye. 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 Thank you. Uh, Thank you. I'll just check right out. Martin, is there any correspondence? Uh, the only one I gave you was from Jim Rugg uh, to apply for the uh, town manager position. Okay. So if we can add that to the resume when we start collecting them. Sure. Okay. Um, okay, a big evening. Uh, there wasn't a, a large turnout for us for the discussion on the intersection. Um, yeah, we were I think each one of us needs to work as a bit of an ambassador to be able to listen to what's going on and, and bring it to Martin if we don't have a quick answer. Um, but I do feel that my comments early on that we have a team of Martin, Rita, and, and um, Everett, that we really should be able to crack the correspondence piece uh, and, and keep, it, keep the job in there. So, uh, that said, it, or looking for the motion to adjourn? Okay, well, Fred, before, um, I'm getting, I got another request about something looking for a plot to bury a loved one. We have to straighten this out. I think now there's nearly a half a dozen people that would like to bury someone. And I know under the previous administration, it was difficult. So whether, and I don't even know for what we need to do. But, I was just going to say, I think Tom is nominating himself to No, actually, I was going to nominate Gary Brown. Perfect. <laughs> you know, I, I just don't know where we're at on this and whether we want to try to make I know we have a lot on our, our agenda, but. Uh, I think we, we, we've tossed this ball around before. And, and, uh, Mary was going to do a little bit of legwork. Um, um, Clyde had a number of observations that kind of went with the geography and you know this work. But uh, I really think uh, I I honestly don't know what the next step is. You know, uh, I, I realize there's technology to try to scan the areas. Um, uh, I have no idea if that's costly thing. Um, um, yeah. I, I will um, uh, Who is the cemetery committee these days? Bob Bibby with uh, and uh, 
Who's that bottle pass for? Dan Marantz. No, no, no. No, not Dan. You know what? Dan's been in bottle. No. Oh, Jody? No, his wife passed a number of years ago. Richard? Richard. Russo? No. Uh, she's for the blogger. Oh. Maybe the airplane pilot. Oh, Williams. Oh. Tom Williams. Oh, Tom Williams. Oh, Tom Williams. Oh, Tom Williams. Oh, Tom. Yeah. I didn't know I said this about him. Yeah, I didn't either. <laughs> but he's, he's voiced interest. Oh, okay. Okay. Um, well, right, I'll, I'll, I'll work with Martin. I'll see what we can yeah, come up with. Yeah, and I'm wondering if you we know, could make a, make a call to, a personal yeah. call to Tom. I can call him up uh, and try to form a new version of the cemetery. Let's just, I think it might be helpful is we could figure out, give, what is it, give specific direction as far as what we need. Yeah, we need to do because a couple of these people, the plots are either adjacent or on their own land, right? Like all of them, right? And then the one on Conway. Oh, uh, the Walker Center. Yeah, yeah. They their land is surrounded. Yeah. Yeah. You know, and if somebody wants to do a put on weed. I mean, years ago. Uh, I don't know whether fruition would stop the Jacob Cemetery up on Reeves Road, or uh, Reeves Morgan Hill. The abundant <laughs> landowner donated his land so they could expand the cemetery. Yeah. So that, I mean, in some cases that would be a possibility to go to some, you know. Uh, <clears throat> the tricky thing there was like up in uh, the Gallup Cemetery, uh, everything surrounding it is in current use, and it would require somebody to take land out of current use to only to expand it if they so desire. Well, maybe it's just a simple matter of what is available. Yeah. Yes, I agree. And those, yeah. where, let's start with where it's easy. Yeah. 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 And, you know. and, then, and then if we know, basically do a survey, and if we know this is closed, then we can sort of say, okay, that's closed, and we have that historical matter. Okay. okay. All right, we have a no numerous future agenda items. Yes. Uh, I, I will work with Martin and try to whittle this down to the second things that are coming around that we need to get done for the next meeting. Um, I think I'm hearing uh, that we want to make sure we're more simply see one we get going on that. Yep. Um, I was stopped by someone. Oh, never mind. I want you to. I think everybody's so, stopping. So I think what you're saying is. Okay. So uh, we can we pri prioritize the list? Right. But we should still keep the running list so we don't lose it. Yeah, exactly. We'll be able to talk about that one meeting, is what I'm saying. Do you want me on this Wednesday meeting to share with you folks if anything comes of it or not? I, you know, yes. Come sure. 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 Yeah. Can you hear me? Okay. Is there a motion to adjourn? I'll make a motion to adjourn. All in favor say aye. Aye. Okay. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you.